Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today in this video, we'll be discussing regarding the various types of cellular networks or in fact, we'll be seeing the comparison between various networks that we have the first generation, second generation, third generation, fourth and the fifth generation, which will be the upcoming generation in the future. So uh, let's begin with the very first generation. So uh, this uh, first generation that is the 1G came in the year 1980s uh, way back. So uh, it mainly focused on the analog uh, telecommunication technologies and it had limited voice services. And so uh, the services were only uh, pertaining to the voice calls which you can do on the telephone systems. And so it was uh, made kind of a free agreement between the end user and uh, to the other users and between the uh, person sitting at the uh, office, telephone office. So it offered a speed of about around 56 kbps. And uh, in that year itself, uh, under the 1G technology, you have the advanced mobile telephone system that is the AMPS, which is a, a subsidy of uh, this 1G system. And you have this uh, Federal Communication uh, Corporation, FCC, uh, which assigned 40 megahertz of spectrum for AMPS specially, which is designed under the 1G from out of the 800 megahertz spectrum so uh, now amp is targeted to provide 832 channels for which it provided a data rate of about 10 kbps and uh, then in the system you have the signal to interference ratio which is lower to 18 decibels and it has a set of forward channels and set of reverse channels so forward channels are from base station to the mobiles like we saw in the frequency reuse technique we have the honeycomb structure so uh, in that uh, forward channel you have 869 to 894 megahertz uh, number of channels and in the reverse uh, channel you have 824 to 849 megahertz. Then in 1G itself you have something called as TAX which is generated by the European system. It's called as the Total Access Communication System TAX. Uh, which assigns to provide 1K channel that is 1000 channel with a speed of 8 kbps. Next moving on to the year 1991 as and when time uh, moved you have the 2G uh, in the uh, 2G that is the second generation you have 2.5G, 2.75G and everything happened within that period of time. So uh, it mainly focused on providing digital telecom technologies like uh, you had in the 1G you have analog in the 2.5 as well as the 2.75G you have something called as digital technologies like you have the visual uh, representation of what data is being sent. You have the representations in the form of images, uh, pictures, you have in the form of videos. Everything was made possible in 2G that is second generation and the services which it provides not only included the voice calls but also the text messages and what you call as the fax. Then uh, it uses technologies like you have TDMA and CDMA. We saw what was TDMA and CDMA. TDMA is time division multiple axis and CDMA is code division multiple axis. And some of the few examples which uh, 2G system can provide is of GSM that is global system for mobile communications, cordless telephone like earlier when 10 years ago or 15 years ago uh, in your home you used to have telephone uh, which uh, didn't have that cord like that. Uh, wire was not there so it just had that one particular antenna and you used to roam around the house and you can make a call so uh, that's what uh, CD2 is that is a cordless telephone which was under the 1G then you have the digital enhanced cordless telecommunication deck which is also released in the year 1991 under the 2.5G and then you have the personal access communication system that is PACS so all these are the various technologies or the services which is uh, provided by the 2G system. Then uh, in the 2.5G, what you can do is uh, you can call uh, at any time. So uh, uh, before 2.5G in the 2G, what had is like users or mobile subscribers can only call at a particular uh, period of the time of the day uh, so that uh, they have a particular bandwidth and they have a particular frequency channel which is allocated. But as in when 2.5G came into picture, so it had a uh, provision uh, that any user can call at any time uh, with any number of data transfer like unlimited data transfer or certain data charges were uh, kept like 
uh, now also you have certain data rates certain uh, internet packs certain data packs and also uh, all those things were included in 2.5G and obviously mobile subscribers were charged depending upon the amount of data they are being used and some of the examples are a GPRS uh, you might be familiar with GPRS so GPRS and all came into existence in the year 2.7 uh, in the year uh, 2007 and 2008 so GPRS is general packet radio service so it's a service which is used for mobile uh, transfer or data transfer and then you have 2.75G under the 2G that is you have the edge technology so it uh, aims to provide data speeds or data rates which is two times faster than 2.5G or 2G then uh, later you move on to the year 2002 so here you have something called as 3G that is the third generation so it's developed by the international mobile telecommunications that is 2000 it's short named as imt 2000 and it provides services uh, which has speeds up to 600 to 800 kbps and it provides mobile tv uh, like you have the internet internet tv you have you have the distant video surveillance the cctv closed couple television surveillance you have the uh, at the shops or at the societies or at the buildings then you have the global roaming services like when you move uh, to an outer base station from your uh, home base station you have the roaming services which is enabled by R inside your uh, mobile subscriber or the mobile carrier then you have the high quality wireless sound and then you can make video calls and it aims to provide high data transfer services and some of the requirements which are processed by the 3G services are uh, 2 mbits of uh, data for building environment then 384 kilobytes of data in the urban environment and 144 kbits in the wide area environment for mobile network so uh, these are some of the uh, range or some of the speed requirements which are prescribed for the 3G and uh, then you have some of the 3G services uh, like uh, you had some text message and fax in 2G in 3G you have WCDMA uh, then you have CDMA 2K that is 2000 then you have time division synchronous code division multiple access that is TDS CDMA then you have UWC that is 136 and then you have the advanced version of DET which was here that is the digital enhanced cordless telecommunication uh, which is a plus version of it and then uh, you have the divisions of that is CDMA 2000 into uh, four subparts uh, that is you have one X so which is at the base uh, you have a 1.2.5 uh, uh, G that is system then you have one X EVDO EVDO stands for evolution data optimized this is uh, one X that is CDMA 2K one X EVDV evolution data voice and then you have CDMA 2K 3X so all these technologies uh, falls under the 3G system then moving on to the year 2008 you have 4G system so 4G system aims to provide ultra broadband internet access which nowadays everyone each of one use and its speeds ranges from uh, 1 Gbps and any higher range and it has multi-channel hi-fi services TV broadcast high quality games then a video on demand VOD then mobile conference video conferences cloud computing and its speeds uh, are 10 times faster than 3G what 3G could provide and it has around uh, three subparts or three standards which is released so very first one is called as WiMAX which is called as the worldwide interoperability for microwave access and so it has speeds an average speed of 3 Mbps to 6 Mbps and when it goes high it has a peak speed of 10 Mbps then you have the third generation partnership project that is 3GBB which is also formulated under the 4G which is built basically on the GSM then you have the long term evolution LTE LTE symbol you might all be uh, knowing when you connect to your uh, uh, 4G systems or when you uh, enable your uh, mobile data you might be getting that LTE so LTE just basically uses all the underlying technology GSM, GPRS, CDMA and everything next uh, so uh, till here uh, we are into uh, picture in 2018 uh, from 10 years we are still using 4G but in the recent years some technological adva advancements will be there and the near year you will be having the 5G that is the 5th generation so 
uh, it will be uh, existence in the year 2020 and it has very high bandwidth and the data transfer is said to have 100 times more than that of what you have in LT for the 4G and it aims to have low latency and also low interferences which uh, provides high quality of services that is QS and 5G uh, aims to provide unlicensed spectrum bands for maintaining or for managing the traffic loads while uh, in 4G you have the cell size which were usually small so smaller cell concepts were there in 4G systems uh, for frequency reuse technique and for uh, preventing uh, interferences caused due to CCI or ACI but in 5G you have some unlicensed spectrum bands that will see in the future what is there how dynamic channel uh, allocations will be done in uh, those honeycomb structure so well that was all regarding the comparisons in 1G, 2G, 3G and 4G and also the 5G which we will be seeing in the future. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you got educated by watching this video, please do like, share, comment and most importantly don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much for watching this video.